All right, this afternoon we're going to be doing some work on this diesel generator right here. This model is an MEP004A diesel generator. It's a 15 kilowatt, three phase machine. And this is one of eight generators that I got from Fort Lewis about six months ago. I've already repaired and resold the other seven. And I've saved this one for last on purpose because I think it's going to require the most work to bring back to life. It's definitely missing some parts and it's been sitting for quite some time. So let's take a few minutes and take a look at the generator and figure out what needs to be done. All right, the first thing I notice about this generator is that it's got the acoustic enclosure on it, and it's missing both the intake and the exhaust side dog houses on it. Now, those dog houses aren't necessary for the generator operation, but they do protect the generator from excessive amounts of water uh, entering the housing. And on the intake side, that might not be such a big deal, but on the exhaust side in particular, I noticed the exhaust pipe faces straight up here, and it hasn't had any kind of protection on it. So. Uh, one of my big concerns on this one is going to be whether or not the engine has any water in it. So before we get too far on it, I'll go ahead and crank the engine over by hand and see if we notice any water uh, inside the cylinders or leaking out the intake or exhaust side of the engine and also we'll be checking for it in the crankcase. All right, you can see we got quite a few cobwebs going on in here. Okay, this set has about 710 hours on it. It's a nice low hour set. All the gauges actually look like they're in fairly good shape. Yeah, it looks like our uh, percent power meter and uh, percent rated current meter both. Uh, looks like they've got some water in them. They don't look like they're damaged in any way, but uh, they definitely don't quite look 100%, so we may be uh, doing some work on those. Notice we got a fuse missing from our alarm panel right there. I'll we'll have to track one of those down so our alarm circuitry works. Looks like our throttle cable's in place. And it uh, looks like we got some extra boxes floating around down in there. It looks like our convenience receptacle's in place. Doesn't appear to be any problem with that. I don't really see anything else missing here. We do have a little bit of rust going on inside this door right here. It really is not too bad. I, I can probably paint some rust converter on it and uh, repaint this and it'll be just fine. All right, looking inside the generator housing here, looks like we got a uh, we got a fuel hose right here. Uh, this is used for auxiliary fuel tanks. Uh, you're not running from the onboard tank. That would be useful. And I'm uh, just taking a quick look at all the wiring and see if we have anything missing or obvious damage to the wiring harness, anything melted or chafed or cut. I don't see anything damaged here, but I do notice right away that our voltage reconnection board is missing. And I have a spare one of these but it does concern me when I see something like this missing because it probably means that something was wrong with this and someone was taking it apart to try and do some repairs. So, Okay, it looks like we have some loose, uh, loose wires on our main circuit breaker here. I don't know, that might be part of the problem. Um, someone may have also loosened those intentionally intending to take the breaker out. So that's something we'll definitely need to pay attention to when we start it up. At the very least, I'll need to tighten them down. Uh, maybe replacing that breaker, so... Looks like all of our amphenol or cannon connectors are tight. I don't see any damage to any of the wiring in here, so we'll move on to the next panel. All right, looking at the engine here, um, I do see some cut wires right here, and I happen to know these are, are just for the uh, ether assist system, so not really too worried about those. Definitely that's not needed for operation. These generators actually start really easily in the cold, so I don't uh, I don't think we'll be doing any work on those. I noticed this uh, fuel line right here is loose. That obviously went somewhere, probably to the fuel pump. And I also see that the fuel pump itself has been cut. Right here that uh, wire to the fuel pump has been cut, so we'll have to take a look at that as well. And I also noticed some loose hoses down here for the fuel system, so we'll need to figure out where all those go and get them reconnected before we get started. And I noticed back in here our fuel strainer and our primary and secondary fuel filter housings are missing. And 
they're not anywhere in this generator, but I have spares for those, so I'll be able to install those. We've got our oil filter canister right here, and uh, this is an external oil filter. And this one, the, the internal parts of the canister are missing, and also the hoses that go from the uh, inlet and outlet of the filter are missing. So we'll need to replace those. And looking at the radiator right here, you can just see you have a hole in the radiator hose. Now several of these sets that I've gotten have this hole in there, and uh, I suspect someone just did that to drain the radiator instead of opening the, the radiator drain petcock. Now unfortunately that's ruined the hose, and we'll have to get our hands on a flex hose to replace that with. Everything else looks fine. I don't see any other obvious problems. No head gasket leaks or, or valve cover leaks, and it uh, doesn't appear that anything else is missing or damaged. So we'll move on to the next panel. Okay, hey, looking down here in the battery compartment, our battery tray actually looks like it's in really good shape. A lot of times I get these, the, the battery tray is really rusted out from uh, battery acid spillage. But this one looks like it's in pretty good shape, even the battery hold down is still there. So uh, we are missing the, the crossover cable that's necessary to wire the batteries in series. So I'll have to make one of those up. But other than that, it looks pretty complete. All right, moving on to this side of the engine right here. I'm just taking a quick look at everything. Looks like everything's in place. I don't see anything obviously missing to begin with. This lever right here uh, is normally lock wired in this position right here to prevent the uh, fuel pump from shutting itself down. So we'll probably need to go ahead and put some lock wire on there to fix that. And I'll just check the tightness of all the connections on the starter and solenoid. Everything looks like it's in good shape. I do notice that this uh, radiator shroud is loose right here, sitting up against the pulley on the alternator, so we'll definitely need to tighten that up before we try turning the engine over. And the belt looks pretty worn. We'll go ahead and get a replacement for that before we try to start up the generator. And looking at this side of the generator here, I'm just taking a quick look at all the wiring harnesses and connectors, making sure that everything's tight, nothing's loose or damaged or uh, any melted wires or anything like that. And everything looks like it's nice and tight and in place. And it doesn't look like anything's been disturbed over here. So we'll go ahead and button this panel up and get to work. All right, starting here in, in this panel, I've tracked down a spare fuse cap. So we'll just go ahead and install that and then we'll be all done inside of this control panel here. All right, inside of this panel here, uh, all we had to do was tighten up a couple of loose leads and install the voltage reconnection board. I have the reconnection board right here, so we'll go ahead and install that. And there's also a, a protective cover that's supposed to go over the top of this to protect all the leads against shorts. And I do have one of those as well, but I'm going to leave that off because I intend to do some experimenting with this, and there's no reason to put that on and, and immediately take it right back off. So we'll go ahead and get these parts installed and the leads tightened up, and then we'll be done inside of here. All right, we have the voltage reconnection board fully installed and tightened up, and I went ahead and tightened the leads going to the main circuit breaker. So, looks like we're all done inside this panel. We'll close up the doors and move on to the engine compartment. All right, first let's get this radiator hose out of the way so we can get better access to the crankshaft pulley. All right, next let's go ahead and get a breaker bar on the crankshaft pulley and see if we can get this engine to turn over. Normally I just try and rock it back and forth a few times to make, th make sure things are freed up, but uh, in this case I'll probably try for a few revolutions just to make sure we don't have any water showing up anywhere. That's good news, it turned over nice and easy. Didn't require anything to break loose.
Well, they can definitely feel the compression on the individual cylinders. So that's good news. The engine's not hydrolocked. the sound of any water making its way out of the cylinders so it sounds like we got lucky here all right moving on to the engine compartment here we'll go ahead and see if we can get all these fuel lines hooked up all right we got our fuel lines hooked up now we'll go ahead and move on to our oil system I went ahead and went through my spare parts and pulled out a couple of pre-made hoses these are standard Dash AN fittings, so you can make up hoses if you don't have them, but since I have these here, I'll definitely be using them. And I went ahead and cleaned out the inside of the canister. There was quite a bit of junk built up in the bottom, rust and, and stuff like that, so definitely don't want to be circulating that through the engine. So went ahead and cleaned it out, and we'll go ahead and get everything hooked up here. Okay, we got our oil filter lines installed. The next step will be to get an oil filter, and put it in there, and uh, get the cover on. So I've got a Napa 1004 oil filter here, and this is a direct replacement for the military filter. Go ahead and put that in there. I like to add a couple of cups of oil in here, just so the generator doesn't spend so much time filling up the the oil filter housing when I first fired up. All right, we got our oiling system all put back together and the filters installed. So we'll go ahead and move on to the fuel system. Now I'm going to go ahead and install two new fuel filters and their housings and the water separator and strainer assembly. And once we get those in, uh, got a couple little wiring issues to finish up and then we'll be done inside this panel. All right, we're all done inside this compartment here. Just a quick overview of what we've accomplished. I repaired the power wire that went to the fuel pump. We replaced the oil filter canister and its lines and put a new oil filter in. We've also replaced the fuel filter canisters and put new fuel filters in. And we got a new radiator flux hose in here. And I went ahead and filled it up with oil. And that should be it for inside of here. We'll uh, leave this panel open because when we start the generator, I like to take a look at things in here and make sure we don't have any fuel or oil leaks. At this point I've uh, got the batteries installed in the tray there. I don't have them tied down yet. We're missing the jumper cable that's necessary to wire the two batteries in series. I could wait till tomorrow when the parts store opens up and run there and get a prefab battery cable to run between the two terminals, but I like to keep a couple lengths of battery cable in my shop here and some lugs for the end. So we'll just go ahead and make one up that's the necessary length. Okay, I have our length of battery cable made up, so I'm going to go ahead and finish hooking up these batteries. Alright, now we got these batteries hooked up, I can go ahead and button up this panel and move on to the next one. All right, this is the last panel we're going to be doing any work in. Um, all I'm going to be doing here is just tightening up that fan shroud to make sure it doesn't hit the, the uh, pulley on the alternator. And just double check all of the uh, fuel line connections, make sure we don't have any loose connections. 
And then what we're going to do is go ahead and loosen up the main fuel inlet to the injection pump and we'll turn on the fuel pumps in the generator and wait for some clear fuel to flow out of there. And what this does is it flushes any of the old stuff that's in the fuel lines out of there and uh, it also lets me see if there's any kind of um, sediment or particulate or water or, or anything I don't want going in the injection pump. I'll actually get to see that flow out of there first. So, all right, let's get to work. All right, I'm gonna check this fuse in this alternator and make sure that uh, it's not blown and that it's actually installed. So, and this one looks good. Hey, now what we're gonna do is uh, open up the, the fuel line. I'm just gonna crack it and uh, I'm gonna turn on the fuel pumps and wait till we get fresh fuel flowing out of it. All right, now we got our catch can in place there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the main switch on on the control panel and turn the battle short switch on and that'll engage the fuel pumps. That should fill up our, uh, all of our fuel filter canisters and start some fuel flowing through the system. All right, we can hear our fuel filters running. Now that's a good sign. Uh, it's probably going to take a couple of minutes before we see any fuel out of the fuel line here because the fuel pumps have to fill up uh, all three canisters, the strainer and water separator and the primary and the final fuel filter assemblies. So uh, probably two or three minutes of runtime here and we should start to see some good fuel. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and check out the other side, make sure that we don't have any leaks in any of our fuel filters. All right, back over on this side of the generator. I got the fuel pumps running now, so I just wanted to come over here and take a quick look at our filter and strainer assemblies and make sure that we don't have any leaks showing up. So uh, I'm just looking at the housings for our final fuel filter for the primary and the water separator right here, making sure that we don't have uh, any leaks around the gaskets or out the petcocks for any of them. And I'm not seeing anything show up right now, so looks like we're in pretty good shape. All right, I can hear the fuel pump cycling on and off now, so that means that, uh, that our day tank is full. And it looks like we've got some pretty clean fuel running out the end of the fuel line here. Uh, it's nice dyed off highway diesel. I'm not seeing any kind of sediment or water or anything running out of there. So we'll go ahead and shut the fuel pumps down and reattach our fuel line. Now that our radiator hoses are in place and everything's buttoned up, I can go ahead and fill up the radiator with water. Now, uh, for this initial testing, I just fill it up with water, just in case there is something seriously wrong with the generator, I haven't wasted a bunch of antifreeze. And also, this gives me a chance to run the generator for a few minutes and uh, uh, flush some of the rust and other debris that might be in the coolant system out. So as you just start it up on water, and then once the generator has been thoroughly tested and I'm sure it's actually gonna work, I'll go ahead and flush the system and fill it up with antifreeze. So let's go ahead and get our hose and fill it up. All right, now we've completed all of our preliminary repairs on the generator and we're ready to go ahead and try starting it up. Now, uh, sometimes it takes a minute or two of cranking for these things to fire and uh, I've had quite a few that start up within just a few seconds. So uh, even if this thing starts right up, I'm gonna shut it down immediately and this will give me a chance to walk around the generator and check for any leaks. Uh, particular areas I'll be looking at will be the oil filter housing and the fuel filter housings. Uh, since we just replaced all the filters, there's every chance that I didn't get the gasket in straight and uh, we could have leaks showing up there. I'll also be checking the oil level and uh, also be taking a look at the injection pump and make sure we don't have any leaks on any of the injector lines or, or the uh, fuel lines. So uh, if uh, the generator doesn't start and it takes a bit of cranking, we'll limit that cranking time to 15 or 20 seconds to avoid causing damage to the starter. 
we'll do is go ahead and switch the master switch to run. Uh, I already know the battle shark switch works because I was running the fuel pumps earlier, but you see that light's working properly. I can't close the main breaker without the engine running, but I can test it by pushing in, and that one's working properly. And I can already see we've got our uh, control panel lights working. This one's missing right here, but uh, uh, it'll be able to test all of our alarm lights right here, and all of those look good too. So looks like we're ready to go, and uh, we'll try starting her up. And we're not getting anything, so uh, looks like we got a little bit more testing to do. I'm not even here to sell them real quick. Oh, uh, see, there we got a momentary crank, so it looks like we got a little bit more troubleshooting to do. Okay, what we're going to do is test the operation of the solenoid. What I'm going to do is jump her from the positive terminal that's going to the solenoid uh, to the start switch terminal, and we'll see if the engine actually cranks over when I do that. That appears to be working just fine. It looks like our solenoids probably, uh, solenoid and starter motor are probably in good condition. We just have a loose connection somewhere else. What we're going to do is open up this uh, front panel right here, and we're just going to take a look at the connections on the uh, on the switches inside of here. We'll just grab them by hand and see if we notice anything that's obviously loose. I'm not feeling anything on the start switch. I'm not 100% certain, but I believe the start power passes through the battle short switch as well, so we'll just test that and make sure, make sure I'm not seeing anything loose. Yeah, I'm not feeling anything obvious, so I'm also going to check these terminals on these terminal boards. Yeah, I didn't feel anything there either, so... Uh, what we'll do is find a point that's about halfway through the circuit and uh, see where we're losing our power. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, start at the actual switch itself and make sure we have good power going into it and uh, that it's actually uh, passing good power through to the starter solenoid. So, uh, First of all, we'll start on the inlet side of the switch and test our power in. And we've got a good 24 volts there. There's actually a couple of different uh, poles on the switch so we'll test both of the power inputs and we've got 24 volts on that one as well so now what we'll go ahead and do is test the output of the switch when it's placed in start and see if we're getting good voltage out of it hey we're actually not right there we got about three volts looks like the switch itself may be bad We'll go ahead and switch it several times, and when the engine cranks, if we uh, get a good voltage, you know, somewhere uh, up close to 20, then we'll know that the switch itself is bad. was that about?
Now that we've determined that our master switch is faulty, I'm going to just go ahead and try starting up the generator with it uh, the way that it is. So I, I hate to replace that part if it turns out that this generator is not going to be repairable. So um, it does work. I just have to switch it on and off several times to actually get the generator to start cranking. So we'll go ahead and, and see if we can get it to start up. Okay, it actually started right up. Uh, I'm going to walk around the generator now and take a look at things and make sure we don't have any leaks showing up. Okay, checking over here, I'm going to be taking a quick look at our fuel filter canisters again. And I still don't see any leaks showing up there. Also going to be looking at our oil filter housing. I don't see any problems there. And I'm going to just take a quick look at our oil level, double check and make sure that uh, it hasn't dropped too much. So. And it looks good, it's right on the add mark, so. Do you see a little bit of water dripping from our, uh, our lower radiator hose on the upper connection there? So we'll go ahead and get a wrench and tighten that down. And on this side, uh, I did clean this injection pump up and I'm seeing some fuel on it. And I see a spot of fuel dripping down there on the bottom of the uh, generator housing. So it looks like probably one of our injector lines is loose. So I'm going to go ahead and get a wrench and uh, tighten all those down, see if we can figure out which one's leaking. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, at least get these two right here. That one's plenty tight. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice this, but this one's way loose. Hopefully that's not stripped out. I got it tightened up. Actually, I should uh, check and make sure that both copper washers are in place since this one was so loose. I really can't see those with the camera, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull that bolt all the way back off and just double check and make sure our copper washers are in place. And at the same time, I'll try tightening up the two lines on the back of the injection pump. All right, I went ahead and pulled the banjo bolt out of the injector line and checked, and both copper washers are in place, so I went ahead and replaced them anyway. I have a whole bunch of those in stock, so I don't really know why that bolt was loose, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. Uh, never really seen those things back off, so I suspect someone loosened it for some reason, but uh, just in case they didn't, I'm definitely going to be watching it and make sure we don't have a leak showing up. So now that we got that tightened up, and I'm sure we don't have any leaks anywhere, I'm going to go ahead and crank the generator up, let it start and run for a uh, uh, few more seconds, maybe 10 or 15 seconds, then we'll shut it back down and walk around and check for any more leaks. sounded good. I could hear it running on all four cylinders, so uh, we'll take a quick walk around and see if we see any more issues. Okay, that injector line doesn't appear to be leaking anymore, so uh, I can definitely tell the generator is running at a pretty low speed. So we'll go ahead and start it up and see if we can't bring it up to a, a normal operating RPM. Okay, uh, I just saw a very large flash and arc come out of the back of the, uh, uh, the generator housing. So before I do anything else, I'm going to uh, uh, pull the panel off there and check and see where that originated from. Alright, I spent quite a few minutes looking at things and uh, honestly I haven't been able to term, determine the uh, source of that arc and all the sparks that we saw. So. Um, Rather than second guess myself, I'm going to just go ahead and try and start the generator up and bring it up to speed. So I, I have a feeling that what we might have seen may have been a uh, uh, something as a result of the engine turning at such a slow speed. The 
uh, exciter may have been pumping a lot of current into the field to, to keep, try and keep the generator's voltage up at such a low RPM. So um, I do have the set grounded, so I'm really not worried about electrical shock. Uh, I am certainly worried about uh, some kind of large arc or flash burns or something. So what I've done is put on my welding coat, uh, it's a flame retardant cotton coat, and I'm going to put on my welding gloves too. Um, I thought I'd actually get about putting my welding helmet on, but I do want to be able to see what's going on. So in case we do get some kind of really large arc and flash out of the cabinet, I'll just make sure I have my head uh, clean off to the side of the cabinet so um, I'm not worried about that the arc flash. So and I did go ahead and close up the rest of the doors on the generator just to try and keep it contained inside the generator if something does happen. So, All right, we'll go ahead and try it again. Alright, the generator itself actually sounds pretty good. The engine's definitely running strong on all four cylinders. I was able to bring it up to about 55 hertz, and I just stopped right there. Uh, the voltage looked good, and the frequency, and the, all the gauges were, were reacting as I expected. Uh, oil pressure was definitely looking good. We had almost 60 pounds of oil pressure. Uh, the ammeter started off at a high rate of charge and then back down close to zero. Um, yeah, everything seemed to be operating the way it should, so uh, we definitely had that big electric arc during the initial startup. Uh, don't like seeing that kind of thing. Uh, you know, who knows what that could have been? Maybe a metal shaving or something like that got sucked into the generator housing and shorted out across some windings. You know, I, I really don't know. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. So, uh, if there is something wrong, uh, it'll definitely be uncovered during my testing. I, I put these generators through a real torture test when I do the load testing. So, uh, sometimes I'll run them up, up to 150% of their their uh, rated current for several minutes at a time and I run them at about 120% for a couple hours. So if there is any problems with the generator head, it'll definitely get uncovered during that testing. So, All right, I hope you enjoyed watching me bring this great piece of military equipment back to life. And uh, we've got some more testing to do, uh, but we'll save that for some future videos.